Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022. It's awesome. I mean, it's honestly, it's do yourself a favor. If you have not tried it, just try it. Download a free trial. There's a link down below. It's just an amazing product. It has like the best masking in the world. It has so many powerful capabilities. It's incredibly complete. Um, it can be intimidating at first because it just has so much in it, but there's just, it's amazing what you can do. I love the product and it just gets better every year. Now, I've got this photo and what I'm gonna do is walk through an edit of this landscape using some of the powerful tools, the amazing masking, and one filter that I feel like just made all the difference in the world. We're gonna get into that. Let's first get started. They have this AI auto and I click that sometimes just kind of to see what happens. And sometimes I'm like, that's pretty good. Uh, and sometimes I'm like, I need to swizzle it a little bit, which is what I'm going to do here. And then sometimes I'm kind of like, I don't like it at all. So it seems like a, like a roll of the dice. Today, um, I rolled the dice and I'm like, all right, I kind of like it, but I need to do a little bit more, including uh, I bring the highlights down a little bit further. And let's see, shadows, whites, blacks, all that's fine. I am going to adjust the temperature. I'm going to go to 5850, so a little bit warmer, so something about like that. And the tint is going to come up to 20. So let's get up to there. And the saturation and vibrance are going to stay the way they are. So, so far, by the way, there's lens correction that's happened, but that's what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like after clicking AI Auto, which is, you know, not bad sometimes, and making a couple refinements. But for me, the magic comes when I jump over here to the Effects tab, which is where I am now. And the first thing I'm going to do is get dynamic contrast. Now, this will add a little bit of crunch across the photo. It defaults to these values here. But what I want to do is actually specifically tell on one where I want this to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and open the masking menu. I'm going to get AI quick mask and I'm in drop, which means you're telling on one don't apply that uh, here. So I'm going to drop the sky and I'm going to drop the uh, the water as well, but only the water outside of the reflection. So I'm going to kind of follow that line and tell on one, hey man, just don't apply this here. And then you just come over here and you say keep, and I'm going to say you keep all this stuff. Like let's put whatever I'm doing with this filter, let's put it in these areas in green and let's not put it in these areas in red. So I'm just coming through and I'm just letting the product know what I want to do. As soon as I'm ready, I just hit apply and it figures out where that mask should go, building the mask, rendering, and then in a couple of minutes, you have a mask. And in this case, there's my mask. And uh, honestly, I mean, it's barely off right there. You would not really ever even notice that. I'm gonna say done. I think that's essentially perfect, to be honest. And it's certainly a lot better than me doing it by hand. It's a lot quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the masking. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna open that again. I'm gonna copy it, because I'm gonna use that again. That is a nice mask. You only gotta build it once, and then you can copy, invert, all that if you need it for other filters, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna bump this up to like a 25, 26, something like that. Midtones and highlights are gonna stay where they are. So I basically added dynamic contrast into the rocks, like uh, the nature stuff. Well, I guess it's all nature. The entire the entire photo is nature. Uh, anyway, into the, the rocks, the mountains, but also the reflections because I want the reflections to be kind of crisp and kind of crunchy um, to really enhance that reflection, but I don't want the water having it. So um, it's gone into the mountains or the land, I should say, and the reflections. Otherwise, it's not in the rest of the photo. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and I've already copied the mask. I'm gonna add the same filter and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna paste the mask like that, but I'm gonna invert it. So now if you view the mask, by the way, you can see how beautiful that mask is. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. So this is the opposite of the other mask. White is where my stuff is gonna show up. Black, it will not show up. And so what I'm doing here is really just the opposite. I'm coming in and I'm just reducing the um, uh, dynamic contrast across all of these uh, all these different settings, so negative 36 or whatever, basically just smoothing out the sky and the water that does not include the reflections of the land. So if I turn that on uh, or off, there it is before and there it is now slightly smoother. I don't know how well you can tell in the video. Um, makes me happy and honestly, that's how I edit. If I like the photo, I think it's a good photo. So. Um, 
here we go. I'm going to go with that. And now I'm going to go into color balance. And this is a great tool for just popping colors in certain tonal areas, highlights, midtones, and shadows. I'm only going to do highlights. I'm going to leave the hue there and I'm going to go to an amount of like a 51, I think it was. So let's call it 51. Got a nice kind of warmish kind of pink look across the highlights, which is mostly, mostly the sky and the reflection of the sky. So there it is before and there it is after. Now it's also hitting some of these gray areas um, across this uh, mountain here and the reflection, and that's okay. I feel like it should hit those. So I did not use that mask to isolate sky and water here because I felt like some of that color, if it's coming in from across the sky, should be hitting the mountaintop as well. So that is done. There it is before, and there it is now. And now the next tool is the one that I'm like, number one, I don't really ever use this tool, but number two, it just had, I thought, a really nice impact on this image. And that's channel mixer, not something I really ever use, but I went into this drop down menu. I got this warming polarizer and I thought, man, that looks pretty good, but I want to just paste that mask in and invert it so it only goes into the sky and water. So same mask as I used in dynamic contrast, but I had to, vert, to invert it because the copy, uh, what I copied was from this original one. So I copied it, I pasted it and inverted it here, and then I pasted it and inverted it here as well. So if I view the mask, white reveals, black conceals. So it's white in the sky and the water, and that is a channel mixer. So let me show you the before. There it is, it had a nice kind of orangey tone, but it wasn't exactly the look I was going for. I was going for something a little richer, a little slightly more polarized, for lack of a better word. I went into Channel Mixer. I saw that drop down option for that warming polarizer, and that did it for me. I mean, that was exactly it. There it is before, and there it is after. I just thought that was fantastic. And the last thing I did is I wrapped this up with a little tone enhancer. And all I'm doing here is adding a little bit of contrast just to give that image the last little oomph, if you will, and I'm taking these shadows down as well. I'm doing like a negative 40 something here. So something about like that, just kind of darkening that area. So it kind of, you know, contrasts the difference between bright and dark. So the sky is a little bit brighter, the landmass and the shadows or the reflections of it are a little bit darker. So there it is before looks a little flatter to me. And there it is now. looks a little bit richer. That's my whole edit, my friends. I, I like what I did here. It was subtle, subtly enhancing the image, being able to take advantage of the power of that AI quick mask, and then like lather, rinse, repeat, right? So copy, paste, invert. Um, and the color balance, um, I think, helped in warming up that sky. There it is before color balance. And there it is with color balance. And then the channel mixer with that warming polarizer, I think was the cream uh, the, the cherry on top, if you will. So there it is before the channel mixer, and there it is now. So if I take out channel mixer and dynamic contrast, or excuse me, not dynamic contrast, color balance, I feel like I have a pretty blue image with a couple of clouds that kind of popped. Didn't really like it. I wanted to bring a little bit more life to it and that sort of thing. So color balance got me a little bit more of those pinks in the sky, which was nice, but it wasn't really balanced enough, I guess. And this warming polarizer really came in, brought in some of that blue. And I think that makes the pink stand out in the sky better. Uh, the pink and the clouds, I should say, stand out better in the sky. So there it is without channel mixer. And there it is with. That's my full edit, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how to use on one. Super powerful, super amazing. I absolutely love it. If you want to see more videos, leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. I'll be back soon, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next video. And until then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.